welcome back to Family Investment on the 12th of January 2020. I would like to start off by saying that the VIX is at 23 and yet the hyper growth stocks are going really, really high. Imagine what if the VIX was averaged about 16 throughout a whole year of 2021. That's my justification of an expected great bull run and this is only the beginning. But today's focus on my closing bell is about the hyper growth stocks, the list here. I was gonna pick a few to speak about. Today, I'm gonna speak about most of them here to give an update what's happening because I've been sitting down for the last two hours just reading update what's really driving this stocks up and I want to share that with you today. So let's start off with Plug. Plug is up about 22%. Fuel sales also up about 20%, but the real news lies with Plug, where they're having a 50-50 joint venture deal with Renault in Europe on their commercial van, providing the hydrogen power for commercial van, and that joint venture has pushed Plug into a very nice territory. And also the likes of fuel sale, blue manager, they're all being shared. All this wealth is being shared, everyone, that's what everyone's up 18, 20, 22%. Okay, the next one, DoorDash. DoorDash is up about 14, 15%, really good after IPO is still going up. Why? Because DoorDash is expanding to Japan. So Japan might be using DoorDash's services and they're being welcomed with wide open hands and that's causing the stock to go up with a great region growth because Tokyo is still the biggest city in the world. And next one is Upwork. So Upwork is going up because of the upgrade from Citigroup. There's no real news why uh, Upwork is going up and down, but it's due to the upgrades. It's all the expectation from institutional investors just a month before their earnings for Q4. But all in all, looking good. Fiverr, on the other hand, are also up 10%, all time high, but 250 bucks per share just now. Fiverr will be doing the advert on Super Bowl for the first time in 2021, February. So if you can advertise anything on Super Bowl, you can sell anything on Super Bowl. And also they're spending a lot of money on it and therefore they expect great returns. But most importantly, they want to shine their reputation on a stage that they are a, a global brand company. So next one, Airbnb. Airbnb is up about 7%, 8%. Why? because they were oversold. They were oversold, the stock's oversold. It's just a basically technical reversal. And also Airbnb potentially might go into the rentals market. So if you've got a place that's been let out short term, but then they're trying to change, they're trying to change their contract for a bit longer term land, that might expand and boost their business and get more uh, money into their company. Okay, next one, I want to speak about Zoom, who's up by 6%. percent they were $350 a share just now. Even despite the fact they're issuing more shares, they're still up because their hiring are expanding. Despite the fact they're issuing try $1.5 billion of shares, the 90% of their, their um, uh, hiring has been completed. They're highly ex basically expanding. They're going to be 10 times bigger than what they were when they were doing an IPO. So they're trying to show. And the rumors about potentially Zoom phone. So somebody mentioned it, but I'm not sure what they really meant. So hopefully we hear more from CES of a Zoom phone. Not sure if they're actually releasing a phone or they're putting a functionality on the device or the app. So we have to hear rumors are on the street just now, but Zoom is starting to catch momentum again. Okay, next one, pins. Pins is up 4%, 4.7%, and they're up all time high by 75 bucks. Why? Because UBS have changed the ratings of pins to 90 bucks a share. That's huge. Just a month before the earnings, they think that pins might be worth 90 bucks a share. So somebody somewhere inside knows information that's not been leaked, but they've put a very high figure. Potentially they might hit three figure by the end of the year. That's the expectation from pins for a good two, three, four earnings coming up. Okay, lastly, I want to speak about is Roku. Roku has been rocketing. You know, I remember when I first invested in Roku not long ago, back about nine months ago, they were worth about 120 bucks. Now they were 415 bucks. No, I let them go about 180. They're still flying. So Roku uh, are acquiring QB, a QB platform. So they're still giving out free streaming. They're still giving out free uh, content. So Roku is doing well on that front. Okay, that's the end of my long list of explanation of what's happening with this hyper growth stocks. And well done to everybody who's still holding hyper growth stock because I hold a handful of these stocks at hand and this is my watch list. And also, I want to make a few announcements that on Thursday, 
at 9 p.m. UK time, I will be hosting my first YouTube live session. And the topic of conversation will be about risk transfer. So wait till that day. So book a space, um, whatever you do, make time for 9 p.m. UK time at Family Investment Channel. I'll be showcasing YouTube live. I'll make it as simple as possible, but I really want to speak about a real key topic called risk transfer. So if you were holding a very sick stock, if you're holding a stock, they were down 20%, 15% and what would you do and the stock slowing down. So this is where I want to explain about risk transfer. I'm going to bring a couple of examples for you on how you can save your stocks. And also perhaps at the end of the live session, I really want to get questions from you viewers on what stocks that you can suggest you're down and on live session. And I want to present what stocks you can jump onto on how you can do risk transfer, where I can showcase a bit of my experience with you guys to hopefully remedy the situation for you. So thank you very much. Please like and subscribe and hopefully to see you again tomorrow on Closing Bell and also live session on Thursday. Take care. See you later. Bye.